Hi, we're almost done. But now we're getting into some admittedly ugly stuff. We're looking for the square root of 49, x to the fifth, y to the fourth. All right, remember that we have an index of 2 here because it's a square root. It's not something you actually write, but it's there. That means we need 2 of everything. I'll show you what I mean. I need to break 49 down into two things, and look at that. It's a perfect square, so it breaks down into two sevenths. I need to break x to the fifth down into as many two x's, as many x squares, I should say, as I can. So, x to the fifth will break down into x to the two times x to the two times x to the one. Remember your rule that says if you if you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. This is kind of going backwards from that. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so this is x to the fifth. Now, y to the fourth can be written out as y to the 2 times y to the 2, because y to the 2 times y to the 2 is y to the 2 plus 2, which is y to the 4. All right, now, we're looking for the square root of all this stuff. All right, so let me write this in a better way here. We're going to have the square root of 7 square, x square, x square, y square. I know I left the x, but you'll see y square, and then on the end I'm going to put the x, because x has a 1, a 1 exponent, and that's smaller than the 2, so it's not going to come out. Now, this will give me the square root of 7 square times the square root of x square times the square root of x square times the square root of y square times the square root of y square times the square root of x. Okay, the square root of 7 squared is 7. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of y squared is y. And then you have this poor little guy stuck under the radical. So now our answer is going to be 7 x square y square times the square root of x. Okay, there you go. You could have done it another way. I was debating whether I should tell you. The square root of 49 Take this, this times the square root of x to the fifth times the square root of y to the fourth. And now break this down. You can break x to the fifth down. You can break it down this way. You know that 49 is a perfect square, and the square root of 49 is 7. And you can also say that, well, since this is a 2, this will break down into x to the 4 times x to the 1, and you know that 2 will go into 4 when you make rational powers. And y to the 4th, well, 2 will already go into 4. So this is going to be the square root of 49, which is 7. The square root of x to the 4th is going to be x to the 4 over 2. I'm going to put that x at the end. The square root of y to the 4 is going to be y to the 4 over 2. And then there's the x. And since 1 is smaller than 2, 
I'm going to leave x underneath. So our answer will be 7x squared y squared times the square root of x. Okay, you could try that on too. Okay, now, this looks mean, but it's a lot meaner than it appears to be. 27x to the 36th power and y to the 27th power. Okay, 27. The cube root of 27 is 3, and if you put that in your calculator, you'll find out also Oops, I messed that up, didn't I? Okay, here we are. The cube root of 27, x to the 36, y to the 27. If you take 27 and break it down, you'll get 9 times 3. And if you break 9 down, you'll get 3 times 3. So you can see that 27 equals 3 times 3 times 3 which is 3 to the third power. Okay, so the cube root of 3 to the third power, x to the 36th power, y to the 27th power is what I have here. Now, when I change all of this into rational exponents, I'll have 3 to the 3 over 3, x to the 36 over 3, y to the 27 over 3, and that will give you, well, these 3's cancel. 3 goes into 36 12 times, 3 goes into 27 9 times, and so our answer will be 3 x to the 12, y to the 9. So let's try that. Let's see what we get. 3x, then I'll push the exponent key, x to the 12th, and then to, to move over, you're going to have to push your right arrow key on your, on your keyboard on your computer, right there. So it comes down. And then y to the 9th. So I get my exponent power again, exponent tool, 9. Let's see. Ah, we did it well. We did it well. All of these rolls are coming together for us now. All of them coming together. All right, let's jump to 28. Because this is a new topic. 28 is a new topic. I think I will change sheets of paper here because it's a new topic. Before, we could say the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 5, and because they're both cube roots, we could just combine them 2 times 5, and that would be the cube root of 10. But look at these. Look at this problem right here. You've got the square root of 2, times the fifth root of 3. We have a new rule you have to use here because you can't, comb you can't multiply these the way they are right now. Instead, you're going to have to change these guys to their rational exponential form. 2 to the 1 half times 3 to the 1 fifth. Okay, they're not even the same base. But look what you need to do. You need to get a common denominator, and that's going to be 10. So you'll have 2 to the 5 over 10 times 3 to the 2 over 10. Now watch what I do. Watch carefully. We're now going to go back to radical form because this says we should use radicals in our answer. With denominators both 10, I can pull that 10 out to be the index 
and then I'll have 2 to the 5th power times 3 to the 2nd power. That will be the 10th root. 2 to the 5th is 32, and 3 squared is 9, and I really don't know what 32 times 9 is. 18, 27, 28 looks to me like the 10th root of 288. Let's see if I'm right. Right, I'm going to choose that tool. I'll put a 10 here, and then I'm going to put 288. Let's see if I'm right. Ah, very good. Okay, now let's go on to 29. You're going to have the same thing, but now you've got the same base at least. Let me kind of draw a separation over here, and we'll do number 29 over here. We're going to have the cube root of 2 times the fifth root of 2. Now they're different indexes, so we're going to say 2 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 fifth. Now, I don't need to get a common denominator yet because these are like bases. So I can add the exponents. Now you can put that in your calculator. In fact, let me call up little Wabbit Emu. There he is. On, on, okay. Um, we're going to have one third plus one fifth. So one divided by three plus one divided by five. And now math frack it. And you get eight fifteenths, which is exactly what you would get if you did this by hand. So our answer, not the final answer, but our answer right now is going to be 2 to the 8 fifteenths. Now, j uh, just because I think I'm done doesn't mean I'm done, because this says I need to answer in radicals. So I am going to have to pull my 15 out to the front and I'll have 2 to the 8th power. Now, I have no idea what 2 to the 8th power is, so I'm going to clear what I have above, and I will have 2 caret 8, enter, 256. So our answer is going to be the 15th root of 256. Let's see if it tells me I'm right. Going to have the 15th root of 256. Did I say 285? Where did that come from? 256. Check answer. Woohoo! All right. Now I leave I leave all of this up to you lovely people and I hope you'll enjoy doing your homework now that I've helped you with most of it. It's not easy though, so I know you need help.